Hello, this is Ball Racing with 10 things to look forward to in F1 2018. Starting off with Robert Kubis uh, testing for Williams. That's right, folks. As you all know, I've been spamming videos about Robert Kubis uh, and I can't wait to give you more news about how his testers for Williams will be, will be going and any video footage I can upload without any copyright infringement on my YouTube channel. Robert Kubitz, as we all know, has been doing everything he can to get back into Formula 1 and I'm rooting for him to get back into F1. Especially if Lance Stroll or Sergei Sorok could have some sort of a problem, I am hoping and begging that he gets into their race seat because he damn well deserves to be back in Formula 1. And quite frankly, right now, Formula 1 needs all the talent it can get. Next up, it is Fernando Alonso and McLaren, who, of course, will be using Renault engines. Of course, this year's MCL 33 chassis can only be better. I mean, yes, the free engine rule will be quite restrictive in a way, but... With more power and slightly more reliability, Alonso is surely going to be back to his best. And I am 99% sure the Spanish double world champion will win a race this year. Especially at a place like Monaco or Hungary. It has to happen. The guy is too good not to win a race. And I'm pretty sure he might even be in a championship hunt if things between Mercedes, Ferrari and Red Bull get crazy. And if that happens, do not count Fernando Alonso out of the 2018 Formula 1 World Championship. Next up, it is the new, the current reigning Formula 2 champion, Charles Leclerc. And of course, the new Alfa Romeo branded Sauber team. I am 110% certain Charles Leclerc will impress everyone this year. He's had ample time in Formula 3, GP3, where he became champion, and of course, last year's Formula 2 series to show that he is ready for Formula 1. And unlike Lance Stroll, he has meticulously gone through every detail of how to pre prepare for the top level of motorsport. Charles Leclerc showed his sm smoothness, his finesse and his technical understanding to succeed in almost every area required to make the top, make the step up to Formula 1. He has spent plenty of time driving different cars and I'm sure he will impress everyone this year. Next up, it is the return of Paul Ricard and the Hockenheim circuits. Of course, it has been a regular complaint from the hardcore fans that Formula 1 does not spend enough time in Europe. Well, the return of Paul Ricard, who, which has not been on the calendar for 28 years, and Hockenheim, which has not been around for two years, will surely re work to resolve that issue as, of course, the European fans will be able to attend more Formula 1 races this year. Of course, ticket prices... Um, may be an issue once again but of course instead of Bernie Ecclestone you, well you're going to have to play Liberty Media for that but Paul Ricard is one of the is a super fast circuit maybe a little bit too flat but you never know some freak weather conditions that both Paul Ricard and Hockenheim might well make the return worth all the weight next up it is of course the Dutch sensation Max Verstappen last year Max had a lot of reliability problems where of course he had been denied a, many podium finishes if you ask me you know such as Canada Belgium and a few other races but the Dutch kids speed it cannot be denied Max Verstappen for me is surely going to absolutely annihilate Daniel Ricciardo I feel sorry for the honey badger but Max Verstappen is one truly exciting driver. His overtaking manoeuvres are absolutely exquisite. And I am absolutely certain Max Verstappen, even if the Renault engine proves to be problematic, will give the front runners at Mercedes and Ferrari a hard time. And of course, 
Mercedes, the battle between Mercedes and Ferrari will be one to look out for. Mercedes' problem from last season was the long wheelbase of their car. If they can reduce that, then they will have more of a chance at the twistier tracks such as Monaco and Hungary. Whilst Ferrari's main issue was their raw lack of top-end speed, which was evident at places such as Montreal, Silverstone, Spa and Monza. And of course, if Ferrari could get their reliability sorted out, then I am sure they will be very, very capable of going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Silver Arrows on a consistent basis. And of course, Mercedes... And Ferrari need their number two drivers, Valtteri Bottas and Kimi Raikkonen, to be on top form in order to give us an entertaining season and to help their teams fight off Red Bull and Fernando Alonso. Next up, yes, it is the Pirelli range of seven compounds. Of course, this season, Pirelli will add a super hard compound and a hyper soft count compound. Of course, all these tyres are going to be a shade softer from what they were in 2017. And with, of course, with um, the, the aerodynamic flow being a bit of a problem with the turbulence created by the new bigger wings making overtaking difficult again, the bigger, softer tyres will make it more entertaining for the fans to watch as drivers will struggle at various stages with the degrading compounds and whoever makes the best tactical gamble will win out. Next up, it is the, research, the rising star of Esteban Ocon, who I am absolutely certain is a star of the future. Last year, he gave his teammate Sergio Perez a big headache as we saw evidently at Canada, Baku and Spa and at other times there were other races where Sergio Perez really was hot under the collar from his young French teammate. Forbes India will of course will have to lay down a law between the, Me the ve Mexican veteran and the French rookie. However, I think Esteban Ocon's maturity will begin to show through and Sergio Perez will have to learn how to deal with his teammates in eight speed. Of course, this year will be very much make or break for the Mexican. And next up, yes, of course, I know you think this might be a joke, but it's not a joke. Later start times is something you can look forward to, especially if you're an older fan who likes to go out partying and drinking and would like to sleep in until well afternoon. Of course, starting the races at 2.15 UK time will allow fans to sleep in longer. And of course, it also allows media outlets to not uh, be able uh, to provide news later on the day, later in the day about the Formula One results. And of course, other sport, other fans who prefer to watch prioritise other sports such as football will be able to sit and tune in and find Formula 1 solely on their TV screens at times such as, you know, half three or even four o'clock depending on what happens. And of course the 10th and final thing you can look forward to in 2018 Formula 1 is more social media fighting. Let's face it. I know it can be a pain in the backside, but we all love fighting on social media. It is literally part and parcel of Formula 1. If you, let, let's be honest. If you don't, I mean, let's be honest. We all are very, I mean, the Formula 1 community is a very opinionated bunch of people. We're all very stubborn. We're all very forthright in what we believe and think about the sport. Of course, you know, we're going to get to see more people lampoon Lance Stroll, criticise Sergei Sorokin, uh, maybe make a few more war memes involving Kimi Raikkonen, who I'm hoping will win a few races and save his career and drive until he's 40 and get a contract until 2019. So, 
if you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe to Bois Racing comment subscribe blah 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 over and out thank you goodbye